Although our app works right now, it's not something you'd want to ship on the App Store. It has at least one major usability problem, and the design is, well, let's say substandard. Let's look at the usability problem first, because it's possible it hasn't occurred to you. When you create a new instance of date, it's automatically set to the current date and time. So when we create our wake-up property with a new date, the default wake-up time will be whatever time it is right now. Now, although the app needs to be able to handle any sort of times, you know, we don't want to exclude folks on night shifts, for example, I think it's safe to say that a default wake-up time somewhere between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. is going to be much more useful to the vast majority of users. To fix this, we're going to add a computed property to our content view struct that contains a date value referencing 7 a.m. of the current day. This is surprisingly easy. We can just create a new date component of our own and use calendar.current.dateFrom to convert those components into a full date. So add this property to content view now. var default wake time returns date. var components equals date components. components.hour equals seven. components.minute equals zero. return calendar.current.dateFrom components nil coalescing date. And now we can use that for the default value of wake up in place of date. So I'll put default wake up time here. If you try compiling that code, you'll see it fails. And the reason is that we're accessing one property from inside another. Swift doesn't know which order the properties will be created in, so this isn't allowed. The fix here is simple. We can make default wake up time a static property, which means it belongs to the content view struct itself rather than a single instance of that struct. This in turn means default wake time can be read whenever we want, because it doesn't rely on the existence of any other properties. So change the property definition to this, static var default wake time. That fixes our usability problem, because the majority of users will find the default wake up time is close to what they want to choose. As for our styling, this requires more effort. A simple change to make is to switch to a form rather than a vstack, like this. That immediately makes the UI look better. We get a clearly segmented table of inputs rather than some controls centered in a white space. However, right now at least, Swift UI is a bit buggy here. If you open the date picker, then close it again, you'll see the animation is broken. The date picker kind of slides downwards, then disappears. This will of course almost certainly be fixed in a future release, but helpfully we can work around it and make our app look better by specifically asking for the old wheel picker to come back. We lost it when we moved to a form, because date picker has a different style when used in forms. But we can get it back by using the modifier date picker style, wheel date picker style. So modify your date picker code to this, dot date picker style, wheel date picker style. Now I should warn you, these wheel pickers are only available on iOS. That's a big improvement, but there's still an annoyance in our form. Every view inside the form is treated as a row in the list when really all the text views form part of the same logical form section. We could use section views here with our text views as titles. You'll get to experiment that with the challenges. Instead, we're going to wrap each pair of text view and control with a vstack, so they're seen as a single row each. Go ahead and wrap each of the pairs in a vstack now, using leading for the alignment and zero for spacing, like this. And now run the app one last time, because it's done. Good job.